everybody, let's talk resume tips. Let's look at some resumes and find out what works, what doesn't work, and what we can learn from it. So let's go over to the internet, and uh, we're gonna take a look at some uh, sample resumes and just do a review here. I'm just picking one here at random. Uh, here we go. Okay, so this resume, I don't know if I can do a zoom here to make this fit on the screen properly. There we go. Uh, you know, this actually doesn't look that bad. I, it's kind of small. I don't know if you guys can see this properly, but, uh, you know, the first thing that jumps out to me about this is you got a picture here. Now, some people don't like pictures for some reason. I think they're perfectly fine. I talked about this last time. Uh, I think, you know, for a bit of personality, there's absolutely nothing wrong with putting a picture on there. And there's some highly professional resumes at all levels that have pictures on it. So, um, you know, if you got a professional sh headshot, put it on there. Uh, this resume has an executive summary at the top. And I think this is okay uh, if this is your sales pitch, your elevator pitch. Okay. If you have that, great. Do you absolutely need it? No. But, um, you know, the, the thing though is that if you're using your resume to apply for a ton of jobs, uh, you're just responding to job postings and you're just sending out this resume. Okay. Uh, this is a great example of why you would have to tailor your resume. Okay. So if you're applying for a job that you really care about, you know, like this is something that, you know, is a big deal to you and you care about, it, you will want to tailor this to that particular job. So uh, it's not as difficult as it sounds. I mean, it's basically like a co cookie cutter thing where you're going to have what amounts to a few fields in here that you're going to replace. Okay. But um, you definitely should be doing that. Okay. Because this has to speak directly to the person that's uh, receiving it on the other end and giving them what they want to uh, want to hear what they've said they're looking for. Um, the alternative, of course, is to write a couple of different versions of your resume if you regularly apply for a couple of different types of jobs, okay, based on your qualifications, if you can apply for more than one thing and you regularly apply for two different types of jobs, you know, it might make sense to have a couple of different copies of it um, with different uh, elevator pitches at the top here. I like what they've done here with the uh, this band of contact information. I think that's actually visually uh, quite good. Um, it has all their contact information in one area. It's shaded so you can see that this is all one section. Um, not as crazy about this stuff here. Personally, I'm not going to be reading all this, okay? Um, you know, it, it almost reads like a LinkedIn profile where you got your, uh, you know, skills and competencies and it's just like fields that they're populated. So I'm not going to sort through this and to look for the stuff that I happen to be looking for. I'd much rather have something up here. Now, something I glossed over here, I didn't really mention is that they've got a tagline, okay? So they've written their name, uh, Mariana, and then sales executive. That's who they are. Uh, tagline's very important because it says who you are, okay? Uh, so you would want to, sometimes you might want to tailor this to the job that you're applying for, if that makes sense. If your tagline is not directly related to the job that you're applying for, uh, and, you know, you got to make sure that that's who you are. That's, you know, who you identify as. You know, if you're, if you're a salesperson, you're a salesperson. That's, that's what you do. Okay. Uh, this is the meat and potatoes of what people have come here to see, your work experience. And it's good that they've got this more or less up front. Um, I would actually start with the work experience. I wouldn't start with skills and competencies. Um, or you could have a two-column resume, which includes some of this stuff which I will talk about in a little bit. Uh, but skills, but work experience is definitely the thing that they're here to see. That's usually the most relevant thing. Uh, and if you look at this, they've got the, um, they've got the role, they've got the, the employer, and these bullet points here, if you look really closely, they're accomplishments, not duties. And I think that's really great. Okay, if you don't know what that is, um, so under each job where you describe each job, you usually have a choice. You could write duties. That's what you did. So you could say, I answered phones, I filed reports, I inspected this equipment, you know, whatever, right? Or you could write accomplishments and accomplishments are different, okay? They describe not what you did, they describe the impact of what you did and they're measurable. And there's two big ways to measure accomplishments. 
One is percentage change, okay? So you improve the efficiency of something by 22%. Or currency. Currency is the financial impact of what you did, okay? Usually when you're at the manager level and above, you, you know, put accomplishments that are measured in currency. So if you're in a country that uses dollars and cents, you would say, uh, you know, I did a project, I, I did an improvement project, I led a team that did an improvement project, and that saved $250,000 a year for our division, you know, something like that. Uh, or, you know, you uh, met with clients and you increased sales and you generated, you know, $120,000 worth of sales above the average for uh, salespeople in, in my business unit or something like that, right? So this person, I don't know if you can see it because it's small, but they have a lot of accomplishments. This says hit and exceeded sales KPIs by 30% for the months of October, November, and December. That's great. Um, th okay, this is, this is not one. This is a duty. Analyzed market segments to identify new business opportunities. Uh, but this is another accomplishment. Improved product sales by 12% for the portfolio managed. You know, there you go. These are accomplishments. Now, it's great to have at least some accomplishments. You can put duties, but it's great to have some accomplishments there. There are also conversation pieces. If you're going to go into a job interview and especially talk with a hiring manager, they can pick out stuff like this and say, tell me about this. Okay. So the other thing here is that um, overall, I think this resume, it just looks aesthetically pleasing. It looks professional. Uh, you know, if I just looked at this and, and, and I did look at this when it first came up on the screen and my first impression was, oh, this is like a professional person. So chances are they're going to have some good stuff in here. Okay, so visually it kind of helps to have it look professional and look promising. Um, the way let's go to the, Oh, I got to zoom out here. Let's the way the stuff usually works is that if you're sending your resume to a recruiter, okay, if you're sending, if, if that's the intended audience for your resume is a recruiter. Okay. Uh, and if you're responding to a posted job, a lot of times they get a lot of applicants. So your resume is going in with over a hundred others, right? So the person having to sort through this stuff is going to be looking at maybe a hundred resumes. And as you can appreciate, they're not going to spend an hour on each one, right? If you've got a hundred to do. So they've only got seconds to look at your resume, right? Now, this is the kind of stupid thing here. Uh, you have to grab their attention somehow in a few seconds. Your resume has to just look promising enough that they want to not just move on to the next re resume, but they want to take a better look at it. Okay. So we do that in a couple of ways. First of all, aesthetically, it has to look professional. Okay. If it looks like it was written in crayon or something, obviously it's not going to do that. Beyond that, you've got to have stuff up front that uh, they're looking for, okay? So if they've said in the job posting, you know, in the requirement section, we're looking for this, 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 right? You should be listing some of those things up front in, in a very, uh, you know, kind of prominent way. Now, here's another example of a resume. Um, now, what you could do, okay, what, what, what we uh, there's a lot to react to here but just to continue my thought one way of doing that if you don't want to completely reformat your resume is to highlight certain words so they pop out they jump out okay if they've said in the job posting they're looking for five years as a developer for a certain programming language or something like that you know you would want to identify that first thing okay you know hopefully it's sort of prominently up here somewhere, but just in case it's down here or it's buried down here, you want to maybe highlight that, right? So it jumps out. If they said they're looking for these five things, they look, they open your resume and you've got those five things highlighted right there. Okay. That that's a cheap and easy little way to like make those things that you've said pop out. Okay. Now looking at this resume, here's a, another example of a resume. This looks 
Uh, man, this this looks a bit dated to me. This looks very similar to the resumes that I would write for myself like over 30 years ago. Um, they're using Times New Roman. I can tell by the way it looks. I don't like their uh, justification of the margins. They've got this justified left and right. So what that means is that the um, the word spacing is changing with every line. It makes it hard harder to read. You know, very subtle difference, but a lot of these subtle differences add up to a big overall impression. Um, the text is too dense. Okay, I would make these spaces a little bit bigger so that stuff jumps out a bit more. I'd maybe highlight some of these titles so they're, you know, they're, they're more noticeable. Okay, and they're using what looks like complete sentences here. So it's almost in paragraph form. I, I don't like that. I like to keep it as short as possible. So write it in point form. Like, yes, there are points here, but it's basically a paragraph that follows. So, uh, you know, I would try and make this less wordy. And the thing about this is that, as you can see, kind of what I mentioned earlier, this is like a single column resume. Okay, so uh, what we can do these days, that's quite easy for you know people to, to create, is a dual column resume. So you've got you know this whole section on one side, you got that whole body of text, and then you can kind of have another little narrower column off to the right. Okay, so you could have like summary, it starts here and it goes to about here, and then over here you've got a margin down maybe here, and then you've got some like points in boxes down the side of the resume. And that could be very powerful. If you have experience over here where you give some detail, but then you have a summary of your skills, like for example, some of this information here where they uh, just listed languages that they've, you know, that, that they've familiar with programming in or something. Uh, you could put that in this column. You know, you could also highlight your skills and some of those could speak directly to what the job listing says they're looking for, right? So it puts it right up front, okay? So they start to see immediately things that they were looking for, okay? And that makes them want to take a deeper look at your resume and not just flip to the next one. Uh, doing a summary like this, I think this is kind of the worst of both worlds. It's too brief to really give any valuable information, but at the same time, it's too long for a tagline and uh, it's, not a, it's not an elevator pitch, okay? So if you don't know how to write an elevator pitch, go and look that up, okay? It should be around, I don't know, somewhere around 50 words in a certain format that just in a few seconds summarizes who you are and why they should hire you. Very, very powerful thing to, to know about yourself and have created. So, you know, you can just summarize that on your document or in an interview uh, very quickly. Okay, um, let's go to the next one here. Uh, we'll, do, we'll do three of these. Okay, here's another one. Um, now, once again, it's a single column resume. Do they have an example of a dual column resume anywhere here? Uh, these all look the same. Here we go. Here's a, okay, here's an example of a double or a dual column resume. Now, once again, it doesn't fit on the screen, so I'm just gonna see if I can fit that properly. Here, you, you get what that looks like. You got a column here, okay, where you've separated out some critical info, usually like stuff that's just in quick point form, okay? And that makes the thing look a little bit more readable. It's more easily digestible. You could look at stuff over here, okay? And then you could look at a little bit more detail over here. Now, as for the general format of this, I think this uh, is superior to the last one I was discussing. You've got your work experience right up front. Okay, th they've got a big section on education here. I would only recommend this if you're like just coming out of school and you really don't have much uh, work experience. Otherwise, I'd put work experience right up front. They got their name, they got a tagline, they got their... Uh, well, hopefully this is an elevator pitch up here. And then they've separate, separated out a few things here. Now, okay, you've got your contact information. I don't think there's any reason why this should take up such a huge chunk of this page. So I'd make that a bit smaller, but I would use it more for highlighting your skills or in a, you know, briefly the key points that you have. 
Um, I would not give your, give yourself like grades on things because you're basically saying, you know, your skills in editing are intermediate. Why would somebody want to hire that when they could hire someone who's excellent? You know, I mean, this is your own scale you've given them, <laughs> right? Uh, you know what I mean? So I would use this to highlight what they're looking for. And that means, of course, you're going to be tailoring it to whatever job you apply for. Now, there's one last thing I want to mention, and that is that uh like i've said before what you do on your resume is totally dependent on what its intended use is some people are using it to apply for posted jobs where you're going in with a thousand other people and it's going to be read by a machine right it's going through you know software that's doing applicant track like applicant tracking software it's doing filters other times you're sending it to a hiring manager okay they will look at it slightly differently um, and other times you're using it as a tool to supplement maybe your networking activity, which is the primary selling point. So if you've already met like a hiring manager and you've already had, you know, an hour long conversation with them and they're already sold on you because you seem like a great person and you know your stuff, you know, your resume that you give them afterwards is then secondary, right? So that's where, you know, the formatting doesn't really matter and, you know, that stuff matters less, right? So remember, your, what you do precisely with your resume will vary depending on what its intended use is, okay? So hopefully that makes sense. I'm going to be doing another one of these, but thank you so much for tuning in uh, to this uh, resume tip uh, extravaganza. Take care.